Hello. In this tutorial, we are going to teach you, how you can implement end-to-end -end encryption in your website using JavaScript. End-to-end -end encryption requires users' public and private keys to encrypt the messages. To store those keys, we will be using PHP and MySQL. So in your PHP MyAdmin, create a database named end-to-end -end encryption. We will be creating two tables, one for storing each user's public and private keys. And one for storing encrypted messages. We will create a folder where we will place all our files. Open this folder in your code editor. And create a file named db.php. We will be using PDO for running secured queries on MySQL. So create an object of PDO. Set the MySQL host to localhost. And DB name to our database name. And set the username and password of the MySQL server. Then we will create another file named index.php. In this file, we will execute a query to create table. First we will create users table. It will have unique ID. Which will be auto incremented. It will have email address of the user. And it will have private and public keys of each user. Then we will prepare the query. And execute. We also need to include the DB file above. Refresh the page. Now check in your PHP MyAdmin. You will now see a user's table. Similarly, we can create a table for storing all encrypted messages. We can copy-paste this. Change table name to messages. It will have ID and sender. This will be an email address. And receiver's email address. The encrypted message and encrypted initialization vector. Initialization vector also referred to as IV, is used for encryption and it will be unique for each message. Refresh again. So a messages table has been created as well. Now we will insert two records manually in the user's table. Public and private keys will be null by default. Whenever user logins, you should first check if his keys are set up. If not, then we will generate his keys and update them in the database. So we will create a form for login. On submit we will call our JavaScript function. Create a field for email. In real login authentication, you will also have password field as well, but that is not in the scope of this tutorial. If you want to learn how authentication works, I will mention its link in the description of this video and a submit button. So a login form is created. Now we will create that JavaScript function. Prevent the form from submitting. 
Get the form. Create a form data object from it. Create an Ajax object. Open the request. Set method to post. Set URL to login.php. And asynchronous. And send the Ajax request and pass the form data to it. On ready state change will be called whenever the status of request changes. Ready state will be for when the response is completely received. And status 200 means that there is no error. In that case, we will first simply print the response received from server. So create this server file. We will first include our DB file here. Then we will get the email from the form. And get the public key of that user from database. Question marks means there will be an argument value here. This is used to prevent SQL injection. Prepare the query. and execute. Pass the email variable. Fetch the user object. Check if user exists. And if he already have public key value. So now let's check. There is an error on server side, 500 means that is an error in server side code. So the line number 8 had missing semicolon at the end. Now check again. The response is empty, means the user does not have public key. In that case, we need to generate his keys and update them in database. So on client side, when the response is received. Check if response is false, means the user does not have public key. Then call another function. Create this function. To generate keys, we will be using Crypto API. Crypto API uses promises to return keys, so we will use await command in this function. And whenever you use an await command in a function, you need to make the function asynchronous. Call window.crypto. Dot subtle. Subtle is required to perform cryptographic operations. And call generate key. First parameter will be an object that tells the algorithm that we want to use. We will be using ECDH that stands for Elliptic Curve Diffie-Hellman. This algorithm is used to create a key-value pair that is further used to generate a shared secret. And we will be using Curve P256 that is used for one-way encryption on data. Once encrypted, it cannot be decrypted. Second parameter is extractable which means whether we can export keys from this or not. But we want to export keys from this, so we will set this as true. And third will be key usages, for what purpose we will be using this key. It will be an array. So we will be using this key to derive further two keys, private and public key. And we will also be generating an array of bits, array buffer, from this key. Let's clean this up. Save it in a variable key pair. Then we will call the export key function to export keys from this key pair.
first parameter will be the format of key, we will be using JWK which stands for JSON Web Key. And second will be the key. Key pair will have public and private keys, so we will use public key here. Save it in a variable. Copy paste this to get the private key as well. Now we again have to call an Ajax request to save these keys. Remove the form. We will append the user's email address whose keys are going to be updated. Give a unique ID to our email field. And pass private and public keys as well. We will convert the keys to JSON string. Set the URL. And when the response is received, we will simply display it in console. Now try. It says that the generate key function has invalid key usage arguments. Okay, they will be derived key and derived bits, that was a spelling mistake. Sorry. So the URL does not exists yet but if you check the payload. You will see that the private and public keys are sent in JSON format. So now we need to create this server file. Include the DB. Get the email address of the user. Get private and public keys. Run a query to update user's table. Set public key. And private key. Where email is. Prepare the query. Save it in result. and execute. First argument will be public key. And second will be private key. And we will send the response back to client. We also have third argument that will be the email of the user. Now try again. Response has been received. So the keys has been updated. We will you pay the keys of other user as well. You can see that both users have different private and public keys. Now we will create a file to send the message. Include db. Create a form.
It will have input for sender email. Receiver's email. And message. Submit button text will be sent. And the function send message will be called when the form submits. So the form is created. Now we will create this JavaScript function. We will create two variables to hold for public and private keys. Sending a message requires private key of sender and public key of receiver. Prevent the form from refreshing the page. Check if key variables are empty. If the variables has value, then we will send the message. Otherwise, we will first get the user keys required to encrypt the message. Then we will send the message. So if the keys are empty, then we will call an Ajax request. URL will be get keys. When the response is received, we will simply display it in console. Create this file. Include the DB. We will use the same code we used for login to get the key. Get values from form. We will get the public key of the receiver. And private key of the sender. Then we will send them both to the client as JSON array. Exit will stop the script from further executing. Now try this. So the server is returning the required keys. Now we need to perform the encryption. The response is in JSON string, so we will convert it back to JavaScript array. We will get the private key. That will be at index 0. And public key will be at index 1. Once the key variables has values in it, then we will send the message. In this function, first we need to get the form.
Then we will call an Ajax. URL will be send message. Right now, simply display the response in console. We will append the sender and receiver's email address to the form data object. And to encrypt the message, we first make our function asynchronous. The keys that are stored in database are exported keys, now we need to import them. The format that we used was JWK. Second parameter will be the key. Third will be the algorithm. We use ECDH and curve P256. Set the extractable to true. This is a public key. Similarly, we can generate private key. And we will use the private key to further generate a derived key and an array of bits. Then we will call the derive key function. The algorithm that we will be using for this is ECDH. With the receiver's public key. Second parameter will be base key. We will use sender's private key as base key. And third will be the algorithm used for derived key. We will use AES that stands for Advanced Encryption Standard. And GCM stands for Galois Counter Mode. This mode is used for balancing performance with AES complex mathematical calculations. Fourth parameter will be extractable. We will set it as true. And last will be the usages. We will be using this key to encrypt and decrypt the messages. Save it in a variable called derived key. Then we will encode the message to U int 8 array. This is required because the crypto API encrypt function accepts the third parameter as array buffer, not string. We will also do this for generating IV. Setting the current timestamp will make IV of each message unique. Then we will call the encrypt function. Set the algorithm to AES GCM with the initialization vector. Set the derived key used for encryption. And encoded message text. Save it as encrypted data. To convert the encrypted data to base64 to save it in database, we need to initialize an array of 8-bit integers initialized from 0. Then we will get the string using string dot from char code function. Apply as a function prototype, first parameter is this argument, we will pass it as null because it will automatically get the this argument. This is a binary string. We can convert to base64 string using b to a which means binary to ASCII. And we will do the same for iv. But first we need to decode it.
Finally, we will append this message and IV with the form data request. Test it now. So it says that the key provided for import is not of JWK format. That is because we are receiving keys in JSON format, we need to parse them. And at line 100 of send.php, we need to remove the hyphen between UTF-8. And it will be text decoder, not encoder. Refresh again. The server page is not created yet, but if we check the payload, you can see that the message and IV are encrypted. So no one can read the message between server and client. Now we just need to create a file that will handle this Ajax request and save the data. Include the DB. Get the values from form data object. Insert in messages table. Prepare the query. Save result and execute. First will be sender, then receiver, then message and then initialization vector. We will return the inserted message ID to the client and stop the script from executing further. So test now. So the messages has been saved encrypted. Now we need to read them. We will create this file. Require the DB. Here we will create a form to get sender and receiver's email address. Change send to read. Then we will create this JavaScript function. We will call an Ajax to fetch the messages. URL will be get messages. Right now we will only print the response received from server. Then we will create this file. Include the DB. Get the sender and receiver values from the form.
Get the messages from database from that sender and receiver. Prepare the query. And execute. Pass the sender and receiver variables. And send the response back to the client. All rows from database will be returned as object. Refresh now. So all messages and IV are being received encrypted, which means that they remain secured throughout the route between server and client. Decrypting the message will require sender's private key and receiver's public key as well. So we will get it like we did in get keys file. And now we will return it as associative array. Send messages. Private key. And public key. Stop the script. The response will be in JSON string, so we will parse it. And print the parsed response. Refresh now. So the private and public keys are fetched correctly. Also you can see that the encrypted messages has been fetched as well. Now we need to import those keys same as we did for sending the message. Change this to response public key. And parse the JSON as well. As we are using a wait in this function, so the function must be async. Then we will loop through all messages. And get the IV. While sending, we are converting the IV from binary to ASCII. So on reading, we need to convert it from ASCII to binary. It will be an array. Split empty will make each character as an array element. Map will call a function on each element of that array. And this function will return the UTF integer code of each element. Since each element will have only one value, so we are using char code it with zero index. With this IV, we can get the array buffer using uint 8 array. Passing IV as parameter. And calling buffer.
This initialization vector will be used for decrypting. Similarly, we will convert the message from ASCII to binary. We will also get each character of encrypted message and get the UTF integer value of it. The decrypt function is almost similar to the encrypt function we used in send.php. So we will copy that and paste here. Change that to decrypt. And the IV will be used this variable. And in place of encoded text, we will use the array buffer of message and change this to decrypted data. And finally, we will use the text decoder to decode the message. And print the message in console. Now test again. So you can see that the message has been decrypted properly. But if you check in your network tab, you will see that the server is returning encrypted messages. Which means that all the decryption is being done on the client side, which makes it an end-to-end -end encrypted chat. Let's try sending another message. So you see the decrypted messages. But the server is returning encrypted messages. And they are saved encrypted in database as well. That's how you can do end-to-end -end encryption in your website. If you face any problem in following this, kindly do let me know.